it's striking that the children working with materials of this sort are giving themselves their own their curiosity is exercised they are looking for the answers to things, and when they find it that's their reward they don't need gold stars or approbation they should get these in, in some sort of a long-run thing they also sense as they move along an increase in their own competence and this is pretty heady that this is what keeps one moving this is this is one of the basic ways in which you you have to fight what I want to call the, the sort of middle dropout, the kid who drops out out of sheer boredom because he's never had a, a decent intellectual experience in the classroom. And they're getting an intellectual experience. We're in the laboratory in a double sense. The, we're trying to import the laboratory into the classroom, and we ourselves are regarding the classroom as a laboratory. I would say the pendulum is one of the classic uh, examples of a system which uh, uh, requires a knowledge of all the laws of physics before you understand it adequately. We're just beginning to probe uh, with this particular piece of equipment. Uh, the study of the properties of the pendulum is very close to the beginnings of the fundamental ideas of modern physics. And one sees here, first of all, a certain style of work, a certain attack on the part of the child, which we think is very important, that he be at this stage quite free to design his own way or to develop his own way of going into the subject. The pendulum itself has remarkable properties, which go on the trees uh, to the, as one child said, the tail of a dog. I think that, that the important thing to bear in mind here is not only that they're learning some physics, and I'm not going to go into that, but that the kind of learning that they're doing now is of a kind that they can use, that uh, they're getting it in a way that'll stick to their bones, if you will. They're taking observations, they're introducing to the observations some way of regularizing them, groping for their own way of stating the lawfulness of phenomena that they observe. We're trying to give them some sense of physics such that they can become their own physicists rather than, than being mere spectators. And this is what the nature of the learning is that's taking place. The great simplifications tend to be quite abstract. Getting some sense of the simplicities of nature, some of these grand simplicities, is precisely something that takes a while. And indeed, if anything is worth taking a while at, it is this, you cannot give them the sense of the simplicity of phenomena simply by saying how it goes. You've got to let them go through these exercises. Okay, Oppenheimer is fond of saying, there are children here in the street who can solve some of my toughest physics problems because they have modes of perception which I have lost. The playground approach to physics or any other learning process is a really a trend on the old curriculum of classified subjects and fragmented data, well processed, neatly packaged a changeover into the world of discovery and of participation in the act of discovery, which is a producer orientation rather than a consumer orientation. I think this big watershed is occurring as a result of speed up of data. The great thing about making a film loop in a cartridge is that you, you make it available even to, to the clumsiest people to put right into a machine and run off and look at again and again and again. My feeling after showing a similar class, uh, some loops about the pendulum, and uh, feeling their reaction to seeing this film after they had been working for several weeks in the classroom with very similar equipment, my, my feeling was uh, this was a very dramatic experience for the, for the kids to see uh, from the adult world, a slightly more elegant presentation of the very material that they had been working with themselves. And they saw everything in these films. Whereas if you showed these films to children who'd never played with the pen, who'd never done these kinds of experiments and so on, I think they would get almost no, almost no information and, all, and very little of pedagogical value from them. So I think the film has to be linked closely with the work. But the great thing about the technology is that it can produce, or provide, let me say, it can provide experience which the child cannot have with the naked eye. No.